Everybody, we're back at Blog World New Media Expo 2012 in New York City, the last day at Blog World. Canal is having cheese. You know it. <laughs> and what goes great with cheese, Canal? Wine. Wine does go good with cheese. Uh, we have Bonnie and Michael here. Barefoot Wines. Uh, I, it, w one of the guys here that works with us said, uh, you know, Barefoot's here. The, uh, they, they created uh, the wine, and I'm a big fan of the wine, personally. And I'm not saying it because we're on the air. People that watch my show know that how much I like wine, mm -hmm. and I always have a bottle of Barefoot in the house. Many a times I've drank yeah. Barefoot wine. The best wine at the best price. It really is. Uh, extremely affordable and, and fantastic wine, co great quality wine. Uh, how did, now, this is a very interesting story. You guys have a book here, uh, The Barefoot Spirit. Uh, you guys talk about how you guys got started, uh, the transition of growing the company. One of the things you guys have done is uh, zero ads. You guys have not taken out advertising to promote the wine. So I want to find out a little, how did you get into the wine business? Because it's a tough business. Well, we started in our laundry room without any knowledge of the industry and without any money. So in order to market our product, we didn't have the funds for paid advertising, so we used worthy cause marketing. What made you get into it? What, what, what was one of the reasons that you wanted to get into the wine business? Um, I had a client who had a vineyard. He wasn't getting paid for his grapes. So in order for him to get paid, we found that we had to do a trade for bulk wine and bottling services. To make a very long story short, that's how we got started. We took over the business then after being able to make that change, that exchange. So this is about 1986 that that's you guys got started? That's when it first went in the bottle, yes. Uh, and you knew nothing about the business? So no, how did you learn didn't. it as you did it? Uh, that has to be a, a very interesting transition. Well, that, that's what the book, The Barefoot Spirit, is about. It's about what it's like to be uh, a, an American couple starting in your laundry room, no, no, no money, no knowledge of the industry. So you go out there and you get your butt kicked. And you find out, you think you're in the wine business, but you find out pretty quick that you're actually in the distribution business. Mm. And you're also in the personnel management business. Because in order to get wine to you in Queens, it's got to get there on a truck. Yeah. Mm. And I'm a god. It's got to go across the country. It's got to go through distributor. Distributor. Got to pay taxes in New York. All this stuff has to happen. So multiply that times 50 states and 28 foreign countries. And it gets very expensive, I'm sure. Very, to, to, very expensive. What was one? Of, I mean, one of the great things about the wine is that uh, you kept the pricing low. Uh, and, and you recently, you sold recently in 2005, but. Uh, for many years, you guys ran it. The pricing 19 years. 19 years. Mm -hmm. You kept the pricing low, and it was good quality. So how do you balance that? Because there are many times you could buy an inexpensive wine, and it's not that great. So how were you guys able to do it? How were you able to separate yourselves from Well, that? you know, we had a friend who spent a lot of time in France, and he noticed that they had a Vandy tab over there, you know, table wine, and uh, that, that French people had. You know, they had it with uh, lunch and dinner, probably breakfast, too. Mm -hmm. uh, and America didn't really have that. So we wanted to have an American van de tap. And to do that, we knew that the average American was a beer drinker, wasn't a wine drinker. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make wine that was approachable, affordable, and accessible. Not wine that you put down, but wine that you pick up and drink. So we got a great winemaker and really helped us out get started. And uh, we later hired Jennifer Wall, an even better winemaker, who's making the wines today. And uh, that's her singing in the background. That's <laughs> so where did you come up with Barefoot? Where did that name come from? We needed a name that I could pronounce. <laughs> I was intimidated by wines. Mm -hmm. I don't speak French. Mm -hmm. I said, so if we're going into the wine industry, I'd better be able to pronounce every word on the label. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And, and also, uh, we wanted something where the image was the same as the foot, something mm -hmm. that was friendly, something that was physically as far away from nose in the air as possible. So you went to the foot. The wine industry was a bit snooty in 1986. And barefoot, as you know, is not. And, and that's your foot. That's my foot. And I've always wondered, you know, that's one of the things that I ask my wife all the time whenever we're drinking it. I say, whose foot? I wonder whose foot is that? And her theory was it was probably a child's foot. No, I was not a child, even, <laughs> even in 1985 when we designed the label. That's so. hysterical. Um, yeah. Did you ask that question at the beginning of the bottle or at the end of the bottle? End of the bottle. End of the bottle. It's <laughs> end of the bottle. The double one, the double bottle. Yeah. Um, wine in, in the States has changed drastically from that. I mean, there's so many great wines out there now made in, you know, 
in in, in San Fran in, in Northern California. That that really changed over the last twenty years. From uh, from what I know, it became more of a friendly thing for average people, you're, like you're saying, to drink wine. Uh, where do you see the wine industry headed now? Because uh, well, you know, there's so many. When we got started in the wine industry, uh, like I say, it was mostly beer. It was about four to one. And uh, people came to us and they said, well, who are you competing with? And we said, well, Budweiser, you know that brand. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's because we had to get people to appreciate wine at all. Now we have the whole generation later, we've got people, the Gen Xers and the Millenniums, they appreciate wine and it's been around. And so what we see is an expanding future for wine in America. You know, one one thing I prefer wine over beer, and I, and I drink beer, but I I when we go out, you know, let's say we go to lunch, I always get a, a glass of Pinot Grigio, mm -hmm. and I sit there and I enjoy my wine. So it, you're absolutely right. I think I think the 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 concept of what wine is for, you know, a lot of people think it's for dinner. It, it, it's it's it goes expensive. Well with food. Yeah, sure, mm -hmm. it does. That, that, that's something that I think most people understand, but they don't know what wines to have with food. Well, the wine that tastes good to you is the one to have with your food. Of course. Uh, and there's a lot of different varietals, a lot of different flavors. You want to experiment, you know, you've got lots of places to go, do wine tastings, mm. and, and see what it is that you like. How come I they don't sell wine the same way they sell, like, a bottle of beer? They do, they do. You can they buy a six-pack of, uh, of, of personal wine. You can wine. now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the packaging has changed. Yeah, are you guys doing that are you doing six pack of wine or no the the current owners are okay mm. yes they are All they right. have seven they have one point uh, are they what is it 175s mm -hmm. okay all right good yeah. Yeah. excellent guys That's uh amazing. again the barefoot spirit uh bonnie and michael uh the struggle struggles the hardships of becoming one of the best uh selling wines in the country i really appreciate you taking the time and uh thank you, thank you so much thanks for having us thank guys you.